Over the years, control ball valves have evolved from simple two-position valves with manual balancing valves to modern pressure-independent control valves. These valves use a characterized control ball valve with an integrated pressure control cartridge that acts as an automatic balancing valve to maintain a constant flow of hot or chilled water. They are used in many applications in closed-loop HVAC systems. In this training, we will cover Honeywell's pressure independent control valves, how they work, their advantages, and how they can save you and your customers money. Pressure independent control valves can be used in a wide variety of HVAC applications, such as unit ventilators, fan coil units, VAV boxes, and even system bypasses. A strength of hydronic systems is that they're easily separated into multiple zones. But this brings other challenges. The piping designer must get the necessary flow of water at the required temperature to each heat emitter in the system, especially challenging when you think about the size and diversity of some commercial buildings. And to get the required flow to each emitter, the system needs to be balanced. Commissioning a system is a time-consuming process. You have to manually set the balancing valves one at a time, you set one valve, then move on to the next valve, and so on. And of course, each time you adjust one balancing valve, the pressure in the system changes. So the valves that were previously balanced are no longer balanced. So you have to go back to the loop again and rebalance each valve again. Generally, this has to be done at least three times, as recommended by ASHRAE. And keep in mind that this is done with the control valves wide open. So the commissioning process balances the system for design conditions. Design temperatures are defined as the seasonal extreme temperature for the location and are experienced less than 5% of the time in a given year. So, a balanced system is set up perfectly for conditions that occur 5% of the time and will actually be out of balance 95% of the time. This unbalanced system will leave zones undersupplied or oversupplied with conditioned water. While undersupply uses less energy, it can also result in unstable temperature control in the space and comfort complaints from building occupants. While a system may rarely operate at design conditions, it will frequently need to operate under partial load. Meaning design requirements does not mean a system will operate efficiently or provide proper comfort levels the bulk of the year. It can be a very expensive mistake to undersize an HVAC system. Oversizing to avoid this takes place very often. An oversized system will increase the flow through the system and increase the velocity and result in poorer zone control and higher capital costs. Coils need turbulent flow for a maximum heat transfer. When the water flows at higher velocities, this flow is laminar and surrounding the flow is a boundary layer of water that acts as an insulator. So, water goes through the coil without good transfer of heat, resulting in a lower delta T at the coil. A building at partial load conditions will have various valves opening and closing with load. Each of these changes makes the system unbalanced. This can cause issues such as low delta T syndrome. Delta T is the water temperature difference on each side of the coil. If the flow of water through the coil is too high, it will not extract heat from the space efficiently. The return water temperature will be lower or higher than designed. Essentially, low delta T means there is inefficient heat transfer and, in cooling, the cold water that has been sent to the coil is still pretty cold when it heads back to the chiller. This can be caused by dirty coils, but is often caused by too high a flow caused by pressure fluctuation in the system. This increased flow causes poor cooling in the space and causes the pump to work unnecessarily hard. It could even cause the chiller to ice up. In the heat mode, Warm water will return to the boiler. If it is a condensing boiler, the warm return water temperatures will cause it to run inefficiently, more like a conventional boiler. When a system is unbalanced, besides inefficiencies, it causes uneven flow that results in poor heating or cooling in some areas of the building. Another side effect is that constant valve position changes to compensate for the temperature will cause greater wear on the valve actuator over time. Many of today's modern HVAC systems have variable speed pumps, or pumps controlled by variable frequency drives to save energy. 
They do reduce pump energy consumption, but they tend to be slow to respond to pressure changes. And pump speed changes are not instantaneous due to inertia. So there are still pressure pulses caused by systems flow changes. And as traditional multi-stage pumping stations have been replaced with single large pumps, the minimum head pressure in systems under light load has increased significantly in the past decade. All the interactions of coil efficiencies, oversizing, and load balancing with pump pressure changes reviewed so far show the need for a better way, and that way is dynamic flow control. Now the flow matches the load in every branch at all operating points. The difference dynamic flow control makes can be dramatic. For building occupants, each zone will be correctly regulated, eliminating issues of too hot or too cold, and valves and actuators will operate without hunting. Consistent flow control also means the equipment won't run as hard, extending its life. And with lower flow rates, smaller equipment and piping can be used, reducing capital cost, or allowing existing equipment to be extended to new applications or building additions. Perhaps best of all, this can be done at lower rates of electrical and fossil fuel energy consumption. Pressure independent control valves integrate the balancing and control functions into a single product. The balancing valve section maintains a steady flow through the valve by holding the pressure drop across the valve constant, dynamically, even as the system pressure changes. And like a regular control valve, they can also be modulated in response to zone temperature with a modulating actuator. To meet various applications, Honeywell's pressure independent valves come in a wide variety of flow settings. The valves are sized by the gallons per minute they can deliver when the control valve is fully open. As the control valve closes, flow to the coil is reduced, but the balancing valve section will keep the pressure drop across the valve constant. This is the function that is key to keeping the system balanced as other zones modulate. Select the correct valve for your application by choosing a valve that matches the coil design flow rate. Select the smallest valve capable of delivering this flow but round up to the next size when needed. And because the valve is both a control valve and automatic balancing valve in one, the installation is easier. You do not need to purchase and install a separate balancing valve. Honeywell offers two pressure independent control valve series, the VRN series and the VRW series. The VRN valves come with NPT ports and can be used with Honeywell Direct Coupled Actuators, or DCAs, or the MVN actuator. It is available from 1 half inch to 3 inch with flow ratings from 1 to 95 GPM. Select the valve with the desired flow rate and the actuator with the desired control method. The VRW valves come with flanges and are available from 2.5 to 6 inches with flow ratings from 39 to 469 GPM. They ship with a dedicated programmable actuator that allows you to select the desired flow rate. Any pressure regulator needs a minimum differential pressure to function. On the VRN and VRW valves, this value varies with valve size and flow rating, but it is typically 3 to 6 psi of pressure differential. This pressure drop is similar to that of a traditional control valve and balancing valve. The maximum differential pressure is 35 to 58 psi, again, depending on the valve size and flow rating. This is higher than the typical cavitation limit for control valves. Within this control range, the valves are able to control flow to plus or minus 5%. The close off or holding rating of the VRN and VRW valves is 100 psi. To verify that the pressure across the valve is between the minimum and maximum pressure required for the valve to operate properly, pressure taps are provided. Measure the pressure at the top inlet port and the lower outlet port. The difference in these readings is the pressure drop across the valve. Both the threaded VRN shown here and the VRW valves have these taps. Note that the pressure drop across the valve is fixed. So if flow verification is required, it must be done using pressure measurement across the coil, not the valve. The outlet tap on the valve can be used for one pressure measurement. The measurement on the other side of the coil will require a venturi, 
which can be integrated with a shutoff valve and Y strainer. Here's a cutaway view of the Honeywell VRN valve. You can see how the balancing valve section on the right senses pressure between the inlet and the control valve and responds to changes in system pressure. This creates flow stability that results in predictable flows and also increases actuator life. The positive pressure principle of the regulator means the diaphragm will not bottom out and maintains accuracy of plus or minus 5%. The control valve section is on the left and is actuated by a direct coupled actuator or the MVN actuator with floating or modulating signals. Long service life is achieved with a rolling diaphragm and stainless steel cage construction. Finally, since piping systems last the life of the building, these valves also have unique field service capabilities. The pressure regulator cartridge is fully field serviceable using standard tools, as is the stem assembly of the control valve portion. A Honeywell advantage is the field serviceable stems and diaphragms in the VRN valve. Although Honeywell offers a five-year warranty on its control valves, as with any control valve valve, over time, sediments in the water cause normal wear on the valves. The Honeywell VRN valve, unlike other such valves, can be repaired simply by replacing the stem without removing the valve from the system. Simply remove the two screws that hold down the MVN adapter and slide out the stem. To replace the regulator, unscrew the pressure regulator cap and pull off the black plastic and rubber diaphragm and metal cage regulator. When the system is being flushed, such as during commissioning, it is a good idea to remove the regulator to prevent it from being damaged. Like the Honeywell control ball valves, the VRN valves are configured to order. This means there are thousands of valve and actuator assembly options, and the complete part number is made up of the valve part number, plus the actuator part number, plus the optional accessories. In this example, VR indicates that it is a pressure independent valve. The N indicates NPT threads. It would be W if it were flanged. The 2 indicates two-way construction, as this is not a three-way valve. The letter A indicates it is a half-inch, and the number following it is the GPM, 1.3 in this case. Next is a letter to specify if the body is brass or stainless steel. The A or L applies when the valve is mated with the MVN actuator. The low profile choice will ship the valve with a shorter actuator adapter plate so the valve can fit into tighter spaces. Next, a plus sign is used to separate the valve number from the actuator number. And in this case, a floating MVN6 adapter is chosen. The MVN7 is a modulating proportional actuator. If a spring return actuator is needed or one with end switches, then the direct couple actuator should be selected rather than the MVN. Next, a plus is used to separate the actuator from the accessories of a cable or a NEMA 3 enclosure. This part number with the plus signs separating the components is rather long. Because of this, we also have short order codes that put all this information into a shorter part number. Our selection guides list both of these part numbers. For supply headers, the VRW series is the flanged pressure independent control solution. For installation, the VRW series uses a unique wafer flanged body. Each valve fits two pipe sizes and is suitable for use with either NC150 or NC300 flanges, with stack pressures up to 580 psi. The pipe size combinations are 2.5 and 3 inches, 3 and 4 inches, and 5 and 6 inches. The equal percentage control valve mechanism adjusts from closed to fully open in over six rotations of the actuator. The flow rating can be set to any one of 50 discrete values through an easy to use programmable actuator. Each valve comes in high and low flow versions with overlapping ranges. For instance, the lower flow setting range on the two and a half inch valve is 39 to 112 gallons per minute. The high flow setting range of the six inch model it's so 118 to 469 GPM. Again, accuracy is within 5% of the nominal. The actuators modulate using a 0 to 10 or 2 to 10 volt signal or 4 to 20 milliamp control signal and are available as either fail in place or fail safe. Pressure independent control valves like VRN and VRW utilize a channel inside the valve body and a rubber diaphragm. Foreign objects like metal chips, solder scale, and other debris can get wedged into this channel and damage the diaphragm or valve stem seals. 
This makes good water quality important. Good installation practice begins with a system flush and water treatment. For filtration, Honeywell recommends a 50 micron or finer side stream system filter. In addition, Honeywell strongly recommends a 20 mesh Y strainer upstream of each valve. These precautions can save a lot of expense and downtime if materials prevent a valve from operating, especially if that valve is difficult to access. When using a glycol mixture to condition the water and prevent freezing, make sure the concentration of glycol to water is no more than 50%. And be sure that no petroleum products are used in the media. Also be sure to notice the direction arrow on the valve. It's important to have the flow in this direction for proper control. Here are the part numbers for the VRW flanged valve. To select a valve, start by selecting the pipe size then the flow range for your application, and then choose either a fail-in-place or fail-safe actuator. FastTrack is a tool to order control valves from Honeywell. The threaded VRN valves can be ordered using FastTrack. You can either enter a partial part number like VRN2 and select the valve you need, or from drop-down boxes you can let FastTrack find the right valve for your application. It also helps you select the right actuator. Each VRN valve comes with a tag like this. When you use FastTrack to order your VRN valves, you can have job-specific text printed on the tag. This is valuable information from the time you receive them, through installation, and through the life of the system. So to wrap up, pressure independent control valves have many advantages over conventional control valves. With them, you do not need to balance and rebalance and rebalance your system during commissioning. They deliver a constant flow to the coil as water pressure in the system varies with the changing loads. This reduces actuator operation and delivers better comfort, reducing expensive callbacks. Coils operate more efficiently with low flow and higher temperature differentials. With dynamic flow control, this more efficient heat transfer at the coil will not cause over and under conditioning in the space. Increasing the temperature drop in each loop and slowing down the flow means that designers can now optimize chiller performance and significantly reduce pumping energy requirements. The bottom line is that correctly sized equipment costs less to install, and smaller pumps are significantly less costly to operate. That means significant cost savings that all of your customers will appreciate. This concludes Honeywell's pressure independent control valves. For more information on these and other commercial products, visit buildingcontrols.honeywell.com. Look for other product training videos in the video library on that site or on YouTube on the Honeywell C-Pro channel.